Hello, good evening, and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Ayo DG Makinde. President Muhammad Buhari has welcomed the beginning of Muslims' holy month of Ramadan, which marks the commencement of 30 days of fasting. In a message to the nation to mark the occasion, President Buhari prayed to Almighty Allah to accept the Muslim sacrifices and strengthen and increase the unity, solidarity, peace, and prosperity of the nation. He urged Muslims in the country to exercise patience and tolerance and reject voices that seek to divide the nation. He also urged all citizens to show compassion to the millions of the less endowed and remember those that have been displaced by conflict in their charity and prayers in this important period. Islamic organizations will leverage on the Ramadan tafsir holding annually to complement government's efforts to allay the fears of some Muslims who have misgivings on taking COVID-19 vaccination in the fight against the effect of the disease. This is coming from Ansaruddin Society of Nigeria on this year's Ramadan on one hand and the refusal by some faithful to bring themselves forward for vaccination against the coronavirus pandemic on the other. The vaccination has become controversial in many public domains as to ulterior suspicion of ulterior motives and its antecedents, as well as the possibility of side effects which people fear. This is why we want our eldership who will face justice with the subject so as to allay the fears of our general public. Tafsir is the reading, translations, and commentary of the Holy Quran that mostly takes place during the month of Ramadan. In line with its determination to ensure accountability and transparency in the deployment and administration of COVID-19 vaccines in Nigeria, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency is partnering with the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC. The collaboration will ensure all appropriate anti-corruption, accountability and transparency measures are established and sustained throughout the four phases of COVID-19 vaccination campaigns. The ICPC will track and monitor the deployment and use of COVID-19 vaccines across the country with a focus on four critical areas of theft and embezzlement, service provision, vaccine availability and advisory. The Executive Director, National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shuaib, therefore assures the public that those with intentions of perpetrating any unlawful acts in this regard, such as extortion, diversion of vaccines and funds meant for the vaccination exercise will be apprehended and made to face the full wrath of the law. The general public is therefore encouraged to report any act of corruption in the vaccination process to the MPHCDA or ICPC. Similarly, to demonstrate the efficacy of AstraZeneca vaccine and build public confidence towards ensuring that COVID-19 is eradicated, the FCT representatives at the National Assembly took their COVID-19 jabs in Abuja. Shuaibu Onoze Yakubu captured the vaccination exercise and brought back this report. Reports by the FCT Primary Health Care Board indicate that more than 40,000 residents of the federal capital territory have so far taken the AstraZeneca vaccine in the territory, with a plan to vaccinate more people before the expiration of the first dose of the exercise. It is available for members to take them. They said, no, what to make it for? We are the representative of people. We want the people to know. The residents should shake off all those social media negative uh, 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 vibes. The FCT representatives at the National Assembly, with their aid, converge on the residents of the Senator representing FCT to take their COVID-19 jobs, encouraging other residents to avail themselves of the opportunity provided. The FCT administration has done very well. The FCT administration will continue to do what they are doing that has made the numbers and the figures to go down. 
so that we can come back to our various normal lives. Okay. All our supporters, please let's embrace it and take it. After taking it, we should also observe other non-essential uh, conditions. The first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccination exercise is expected to end in a week's time. Shuaibu Onoseyaku, NT News. President Muhammad Buhari has described Nigerian scientists as worthy assets to be nurtured and observed that the COVID-19 pandemic revealed the potentials, talents and the creativity of the nation's scientists. In a speech delivered on his behalf by the Vice President Yemi Oshibaju at a public forum organized by the Nigerian Academy of Engineering, the President commended Nigerian engineers for the diversity of the experience and competence on the importance of the role of science, technology and engineering in dealing with the pandemic, the president noted that the world turned to these disciplines for immediate solutions and answers. And that's one of the most poignant lessons of the response to the pandemic is the critical interdependence of science and engineering. Giving an update on production of local vaccine, the president noted that the African Center of Excellence for Genomics of Infectious Disease has developed an efficacious rapid test for COVID and have been working on a vaccine in collaboration with Dalsinvax, digital immune optimized synthetic vaccines, Cambridge UK, using the Dalsinvax genomic based technology. Now to some security matters, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru, has reiterated the commitment of the armed forces to improve security situation across the country. During an appearance before the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee investigating the purchase of arms and ammunition by the armed forces from 2010 till date, the Army Chief forwarded documents requested to aid the investigation. I believe we'll continue to remain partners progress will continue to work for the Nigerian people. The committee will in the next four weeks study the contents after which it hopes to have another engagement with the army chief. The Nigeria police also appeared at Monday's sitting but deliberations were shifted to a later date to enable the appearance of the inspector general of police. Now, there are about 6 million illegal weapons reportedly in the hands of Nigerians with potential to cause anarchy in the country. This is one of the revelations as guests on Good Morning Nigeria discussed fallout of the recent town hall meeting on national security held in Kaduna. Ekemini Williams reports that the discussants stressed that solution to the prevailing insecurity lies in the full implementation of resolutions reached at the town hall meeting. Emergency, banditry, kidnapping and various agitations across Nigeria have escalated insecurity in the country. And guests on Good Morning Nigeria agree that the situation is a potent threat to all segments of society, especially as the issues have been allowed to fester through the years by successive leadership and the declining value system. This informed the decision of federal government to convene the town hall meeting to correct the anomaly. The important thing is that we resolve that we must have an elite consensus that one breakup of this country is not an option. Two, we must, we must work to fix this country. We would have thought that today we would have changed our animal husbandry system because the majority of these students, I mean, full and new children who participated, today we have got doctors among them, we have got engineers among them, but we don't have any scientists among them on animal husbandry. There is a real th threat of breakdown, which means if this time we do not implement the decisions that have been thought through and proposed, then the risk is the survival of the country would itself be a threat. All of us relate to our kids and, 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 and brothers back in the villages. We see actually how the, 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 their needs, very basic, law abiding people, but actually their lives compounded more by uh, a leadership that is not responsive, 
killed institutions and therefore made governance the administration of law and order much more difficult. The elite has a big responsibility in this. They reiterated the need for both government and the people to live up to their obligations by upholding the laws. In Abuja, Ekemeni Williams, NTA News. Let's talk some legislative matters. A formal legislative assessment has been conducted by the National Assembly Joint Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters with the intention of instituting necessary adjustments to the laws guiding the functions of the National Human Rights Commission. National Assembly Correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. Deliberations at the committee sitting were on a bill to repeal and reenact the National Human Rights Commission Act 2004. We are all very familiar with the issues at hand. And all we need to do is to be forthright in our presentations. Is to, among other things, reposition and streamline the institutional framework of the commission. It is important for us to to have a fund that will take care of these so many issues that are on ground. The need to resolve and harmonize areas of differences with other existing laws was also brought to the fore. Permit the denial of an application for any information, disclosure of which may be injurious to the defense of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There are areas where due process under the law has to take place. There has to be an order of the court. Absence of powers by the Commission's Governing Council, as well as provision of human rights funds and 1% levy, were the issues that some stakeholders said require further assessment. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. In another development, the House of Representatives is committed to ensuring the completion of the proposed 12 billion naira secretariat complex for the National Assembly Service Commission. This was made known by the Chairman, House Committee on Public Service Matters, Sani Bala, while on an oversight to the Commission, Mobolaji Moribiri reports. The oversight to the commission by the members provides opportunity to examine challenges faced by the commission, which has a mandate of building a workforce for the legislature. We are thinking of a conference of the entire uh, state assembly, state uh, service commission, state assembly service commission, so that we can hear their problems and come up with a unified stand which can be a national uh, position. We are spending a lot of money paying for this building. And we insisted, and I take this opportunity to publicly thank the chairman of your committee. He single-handedly fought to see that money is appropriated so that that building will start. Members of the committee say they will continue to work with the commission in the interest of Nigerians. I will try in as much to see that uh, we really intervene because already I know in this year's budget uh, r around 3 billion is appropriated for the construction of your uh, new sec uh, secretariat headquarters adjacent to the National Assembly. Uh, At the end of the roundtable discussion, members of the committee were led on facility tour of the Commission's proposed permanent office complex by the management of National Assembly Service Commission. In Abuja, Mubolaji, Moribiri, NTA News. Moving on now, the Minister of State for Petroleum, Timmy Pre Silva, says the National Gas Expansion Program is geared towards the implementation of federal government's commitment to taking 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. It stated this other national gas expansion program in Imo State, the second to be held in the southeast geopolitical zone. Bright Ebuchuo reports. Federal 
government rolled out its national gas expansion program in December 2020, which involves the conversion of well-powered cars and generators from petrol to gas. Minister of State for Petroleum, Timmy Preo Siva, while speaking at the national gas expansion program in Owere, says the initiative will promote the use of natural gas as a main energy source for sustained industrialization through the establishment of gas-based industries. With proven gas reserves of over 200 trillion cubic feet of gas and upsides of 600 TCF, natural gas presents an opportunity for the nation to use gas as a catalyst for its socio-economic renaissance. Governor Hopu Zodima, represented by the Speaker in the State House of Assembly, Paul Emezim, lauded the federal government for the initiative, affirming that it will enhance the social economic growth of the country. We will inform of the training that can bring our children to different areas of utility through this process with means that is so it is expected that as Nigerians key into the use of natural gas as alternative to fuel, the challenge is confronting the nation as a result of the unpredicted nature associated with global oil prices will become a teen of the past. In our bright able to NTA News. Let's join Kehinde from Lagos Studio on reports making the rounds on Nationwide. Good evening, Kehinde. Hello, Ayodeji, and well, welcome to Lagos. Statistics extracted from the records of the Papa Command of the Nigeria Customs Service shows that goods worth 42 billion naira were exported within the first quarter of the year. This is good news as the figures is an indication that the command is winning the anti-smuggling war. This assertion, as given by the controller Yusuf Ibrahim, explained that business owners now understand the importance of adhering to legitimate process in trade facilitation. Marco Olaleya reports. Lay waiting within this terminal are containers with questionable contents, but the customs in keeping tab on smuggling activities identified 28 for contravening various import and excise duty laws in the first quarter of the year. This container, for instance, is loaded with medicated soaps, but firstly declared as baking powder. It is a deliberate attempt by the importers to escape confiscation since the content falls under contraband. The importer of another container took concealment to a new level when drugs like Tramador were packed with change of identity to deceive unsuspecting law enforcement agents. But the customs ahead of smugglers in the deception game intercepted the items. Different, different kind of drugs and they are all unregistered pharmaceutical drugs. My advice to the fellow citizens is this. Please and please be compliant with government policies. Government is not making this policy for its own. It's making it for the own citizen. And we are tracing this kind of importer to the end through the system and see whether he has other containers also. The anti-smuggling drive of the APAPA command no doubt is paying off, as revenue posted for the first quarter of the year shows a 44% increase when compared to 2020. Cough syrup with codeine. We have been trailing this since September of last year, 2020. And we were able to intercept it only, I think, 23rd, 23rd of March of this year. Apart from generating 159 billion naira in the first quarter of the year, the duty paid value of seized items were 1.8 billion naira. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. In the same vein, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, Lagos Command, has apprehended members of a syndicate allegedly involved in the legal bunkery of Petroleum Mortal Spirits, PMS. The gang was captured at Barua Town in Alimoshi local government area of Lagos. Daniel, I need Daniel's reports. Commandant, 
Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Lagos, Paul Ayeni informed newsmen that the command got a tip-off at about 1 o'clock in the morning, and men of the corps swung into action, leading to the arrest of the alleged suspects. Through the intelligence they gathering, we tracked down the truck containing uh, over 60,000 uh, liters of PMS around Barua area. The syndicate, two men in their 30s, are in the cause custody. Ayeni added that on certain the NSCDC personnel, about 40 suspected individuals also involved in the illicit business attacked the law enforcement agents. They were, however, overpowered by the security agents. NSCDC will not condone any acts of vandalism. Whosoever call himself a perpetrator will face the wrath of law. The NSCDC boss reiterates the call's resolve to protect the nation's infrastructure and ensure culprits are punished accordingly. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. We'll take a short break now. Nationwide continues shortly. You're welcome back. The 10 schools affected by the recent hijab crisis in Kwara State have resumed for third term academic session two weeks earlier than their counterparts in other schools as directed by the state's Ministry of Education and Human Capital Development. Olajide Bello visited some of the schools. While teachers and students in some of the schools were already in class for academic activities by 8 a.m., some pupils were just resuming a few minutes to 9. Though some schools like St. Anthony's Junior Secondary School and St. Barnabas have commenced academic activities in full scale, others were yet to get down to work. However, they are all working towards preparing students for their second term examinations. We have had an assembly. Uh, where we uh, instructed our students uh, to tell their colleagues that are yet to resume uh, to come to school as from tomorrow. Principal Inado Ziem, an SS3 student at CNS College, is happy to have another chance to prepare for the senior school certificate examinations and regain what he had lost to the temporary closure. It will be very good for us because it will give us time to work hard and cover schedules or cover places where we've lagged behind. We are very glad to be in the school at this time. Most of the syllabus, we, are, we just want to recover it now. There is calm in all the schools visited, and I saw a police van stationed only at CNS College, Saboke. It will be recalled that academic activities were disrupted in the 10 affected schools due to hijab crisis, and this early resumption is to bring the likes of Prince Will up to speed on what they had missed during the temporary closure or large day below NTA news from Nasarawa comes a report that the state's government is strengthening partnership with key players to promote technical and vocational education in the state Aliyu Tijani Mohammed reports that the renewed partnership is to create hundreds of jobs for the unemployed with the number of unemployed youths on the increase, Nasra State Government said partnership with engineering bodies will enhance the implementation of its job program, targeting to empower hundreds of youths with skills for self-reliance. Acknowledging the role of engineers in infrastructural development in the society, Governor Abdullah Isule taxed them to address cases of building collapse and quackery in the profession and ensure only certified engineers are licensed to practice in the country. This is in furtherance of our collective commitment to stimulate the development of engineering in the state as a fulcrum for minimal and meaningful development. President. Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren Ali Radu said, the body has threatened its engineering regulatory monitoring unit to check activities of unlicensed engineers as well as address complaints and grievances of the public. The ERM will not tolerate any form of foul practice in the discharge of your duties. Always endeavor to be above board. Be worthy ambassadors of Koren in Nasarawa State. 
with the renewed partnership with the state government. It is expected that it will encourage engineering education amongst youth as well as build skills relevant for the contemporary society. In Lafia, Aliuti Jen Mohamed, NTA News. For the report on Borono State's government's reconstruction of Bama community, let's join Abubakar in Meiduguri. Good evening, Abubakar. It's really good to see you this Tuesday evening, Ayodeji. As part of the Borno State Government resettlement efforts, Governor Babagana Umara Zulum says 500 houses will be constructed in Gurosoi town in Bama local government destroyed by the insurgents in addition to reconstruction of dilapidated ones. The governor disclosed this when he paid a courtesy call on the show of Bama Umar Ibn Kari Ibrahim El Kenemi at his palace in Bama during his official engagements in the council area. Mohammed Guni completes the story. Ngurosoe, an agrarian community 14 kilometers away from Bama, was known for agricultural activities, especially irrigation farming, before it was displaced by the insurgents. Professor Zilmi is of the view that resettlement of Ngurosoe will shape the way for revitalization of agricultural activities in the district and beyond, hence the reconstruction drive, and further assured the show of Bama that more land spaces will be created for agricultural activities from all directions to enable farmers to cultivate this year. We want to ensure that the year 2021 will be a prosperous year for the farmers. The governor also stressed commitment to resuscitating education sector at all levels and stressed commitment to return of Umar Ibn Ibrahim College of Education, Science and Technology, Bama, to its permanent site and further informed that Bama Town will be made jam center. Show Obama, Umar Ibn Kari Ibrahim El Kanemi, who was full of appreciation to the governor for his continued support to Bama Emirate and return of refugees of Bama extraction from Minawao camp, also made a case for opening up more land spaces for agriculture as the population is increasing. The governor also met with stakeholders of the area, where he also assured support to entrepreneurs and farmers in the area to start business and farming activities crippled by the insurgency, among other developmental strife in the economically strategic area. Stakeholders of the area took turns to loud efforts of the governor at restoring the lost glory of Bama and assured absolute loyalty and support to his administration. While in Bama, the governor also interacted with the civilian JTF, hunters and vigilante, where he applauded operatives for their efforts to rid the area of terrorism and release 8.5 million Naira cash support, assurances of continued support to them, as well as support to the families of the 69 slain volunteers, including education of their children. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. And back here in Maiduguri, Sheikh of Borno Abubakar Ibn Umar Garbay Al Amin Al Kanemi has called on traditional and community leaders to support in monitoring the misuse of ready to use therapeutic food by adults and diversion for animal fattening. The show made the call during an advocacy visit by the Nutrition Unit of the State Primary Healthcare Development Agency and UNICEF. Pauline Kujevana has more details. The introduction of ready-to-use therapeutic food route for the treatment of IQ malnutrition among under five children was to curtail the morbidity and mortality rate among them. However, this expensive life-saving commodity has been misused by adults as some use them or sold for animal consumption, hence the advocacy visit by the Nutrition Unit of State Primary Healthcare Development Agency in collaboration with UNICEF to involve in traditional institutions in fighting against mismanagement of the food. The show of Banu Abubakar Ibn Umar Garbay and Amin El Kanami pledged the council's support in that regard and called on the traditional leaders to monitor and resolve reported cases in their domain. This thing is very important. And it's important to our people and important to our words. It's actually important to use it and help our people to use it appropriately, inshallah. Executive Director of State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Shatima Melafia, reiterated that root is free and saves life of children who are only malnourished. This insurgency has uh, affected most people uh, and have to feed their families. This uh, increased the risk for children to have malnutrition. The sensitization on nutrition program and roof misuse to the Emirate Council is a milestone to improving child health services in Borno State. In Meduguri, Paul and Kujavana, NTA News. You're on to Nationwide from Meduguri. Let's take another break now to join our Patakot Network Center for more stories. Stay with us.
Good and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Nigerian Army High Command is currently harnessing the skills of its retirees in a renewed effort towards combating rising national security challenge. Chief of Army Staff General Ibrahim Atahiru said the integrated effort is geared towards checkmating insurgency and rising crime in the country. Kingsley Amajiri reports. A marching order given to the Nigerian military to contain the rising cases of banditry, insurgency, kidnapping, and other crimes informed the decision of the Nigerian army to adopt newer strategies to checkmate crime rates in the country. This workshop for veterans drawn from units and commands in the southern part of the country is intended to harness the military skills of these retired soldiers for enhanced national security. This intent of promoting combined effort especially from those of us in uniform, both serving and retired, in securing our nation, which is to have a Nigerian army that is in a position to professionally defeat all adversaries in the Nigerian environment. Secretary to River State Government, Tami Danagogo, represented Governor Nelson Wiki at the event. The peace we are enjoying now in River State is as a result of your determination and you are sacrificed. Though retired, not tired, these active military retirees are willing to offer their services to their fatherland. In our various communities where we stay now as veterans, they need our services, they need our uh, professional advice. It's expedient that uh, uh, those of us who are now out of the service may have something to offer. The workshop had technical session for cross-fertilization of military intelligence, expertise, and strategies among the participants in Port Harcourt, Kingsley, Amajiri, NTA News. After a long work at central areas or walkways, especially in the hot season, one refreshing feeling that readily comes to mind at the sight of a naturally well-groomed tree or lines of trees is shield, refreshing breeze, and beautification. This feeling is not alien to many Nigerians, whether mobile or not. Joy Uzo in this report reminisces the significance of nurturing a nature-friendly environment and making it an essential part of our development plan. Let's see. One aesthetic feature of the age-long endowed garden city of Port Harcourt is its well-natured green space serene as well as nature-friendly trees that boost its artful appearance. This quality that the city is once known for is not a common feature today, making the few areas where the high green space is still commonly available a safe haven for residents after some hours of exposure to the hot sun and ash weather as a result of hustling. When I was moving on the main road, I, I was feeling fun, but when I come close to a place like this, I think I can see the air is making my body so cool. Research shows that 80% of the population now live in towns, and the benefits of providing high-quality green spaces is widely recognized. These vital spaces can be taken for granted, but undoubtedly had significant value to developments in terms of social, economic, and environmental benefits. The mangrove forest is not there anymore. People are ill. To ensure that people are aware of the value of trees to the environment. So if we have trees, it will help to combat the, um, the climate change. There's a lot of flowers and trees. So we need it, and I feel happy when I'm close to such breezy environment instead of the pollution that is around. With the pollutions brought about by global warming and exploration activities, especially in this part of the continent, it becomes apt for government and individuals to include tree planting as well as nurturing a healthy green space as an essential part of their development plans. In Port Harcourt, Joy Uzo. NTA News. And that was trending in Port Harcourt. Ayo, it's back to you in Abuja. Thanks, Jenny.
Back here in Abuja, a new partnership between Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NAITI, and civil society organizations is blossoming to improve and sustain business environments in the extractive sector. To this end, a capacity building workshop has been organized for civil society organizations. Musa Abubakar reports. Just as the extractive industry is growing in Nigeria, so is the end for accountability and transparency in the sector. Now, a common ground is being established as issues such as energy transition, environmental reporting, and gender balance are discussed here at the workshop for NIETI and civil society organizations. The goal is to implement the global standard for good governance of oil, gas, and minerals for the extractive sector. As you may be aware, the Global Conference of the EITI held in Paris in 2019 approved new standards. These standards specify that implementing countries like Nigeria expands the scope of implementation, not just on oil, gas, and mining, but to venture into other areas like beneficial ownership, contract transparency, environment, gender, open government partnership. These are the areas and the direction that the EITI is going. And we have a responsibility as an implementing country to ensure that the civil society that are key partners in this process are fully aware of these developments. The dialogue is expected to seek input on how best to implement new EITI standard to expand scope of benefit. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. It's time to join Susan from a Makudi network center on the burial of some military personnel who lost their lives recently. Good evening, Susan. Thank you, Ayodeji. It's good to have you join us in Makudi. The People's Democratic Party Governors Meeting held under closed doors in Makudi, the Benue State Capital, has ended with a call on the leadership to strive to end the endemic security problems in the country. Chairman of the Forum, Alhaji Aminu Tambuwal, disclosed this after the long hours of deliberations. Charles Abba reports. The civil apron of the NAF airport, Makudi, witnessed an unprecedented number of aircrafts that lifted the PDP governors to the meeting. The meeting, which was held at the banquet hall of the government house, Makudi, lasted for hours. And at the end of the deliberation, chairman of the PDP Governor's Forum, Alhaji Aminu Tambua, read the communique issued. The meeting recommended decentralization of the nation's security architecture with emphasis on states and local governments. It called on revenue mobilization, allocation, and fiscal commission to evolve new formula as to allocate more resources to states and local governments. The meeting also called for a more transparent and accountable running of the NMPC. It also called on Mr. President to leave the no-flight zone in position on Zapora State. The forum, however, commended governors of PDP control states for their execution of legacy projects, among others. Assures Nigerian that help is on the way, and the PDP is primed to offer effective leadership once again to Nigeria. It enjoined Nigerians to once more place their trust on the PDP as the only effective vehicle to salvage the country. The meeting was the first of its kind held in a state capital other than the FCT Abuja. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA. Governor Samuel Utum says his administration will assist security agencies in fishing out the perpetrators of the attack on soldiers, leading to the death of 12 of them. He said this at the burial ceremony of the soldiers held at the military cemetery, Wurukum, Makudi, Benue State. Blessing Omeche Ibite has details. Following the crisis rocking the Konshisha Oju Axis of Benue State, military personnel of Operation Mensa were deployed to quell the lingering crisis. However, last week, some of the military personnel were attacked by armed militia in the crisis reading area, leading to the death of one captain and 11 soldiers. 
Governor Samuel Otum and top military officers converged on the military cemetery Makudi, where the corpses of the 12 soldiers were to be laid. The governor who condemned the attack condoled with President Muhammadu Buhari as the commander in chief of the armed forces, the Nigerian army, and families of the deceased for the loss, describing the attack as unfortunate. I want to assure the Nigerian army, the families, and in fact Nigerians, that attack on security men is attack on all. I equally want to apologize to the families of the bereaved. It's at that time that I made those comments of two soldiers, it was the information available to me. In their separate messages, the chaplain and imam of 72 Special Forces Battalion who sued for peace in the land say the fallen soldiers lived sacrificial lives protecting the territorial integrity of the country. The bodies were later laid to rest after a 21-gun salute in their honor. In Makudi, blessing Omecha Ibuti, NTA News. And that's the size of our bulletin from Makudi. It's back to Ayo Deji in Abuja for more on NTA Nationwide. Thanks, Susan. Nigerian government can now respond to sexual and gender-based violence from multi-sectoral views with technical and strategic inputs from different experts at diverse sectors. That was the inauguration, that was at the inauguration of the Strategic Knowledge Management National Technical Working Group at the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. Momso Demian Dutti reports. What we have on hand now is over 3,000 reported cases. But out of these three, over 3,000 reported cases, only 11 have been prosecuted. That is not acceptable. I appeal to the justice system to rise up to the occasion to ensure that no justice is delayed. This is one of the many reasons that necessitated launch of a national strategic knowledge management technical working group. Collate and effectively manage all GBV data in Nigeria, changing some of the key social norms that affect women's ability to reach their full potential. It is expected not only to provide the highest level of coordination, monitoring, and evaluation of programs and surveys on sexual and gender-based violence, but also ensure responsiveness to national indicators. This is very important instrument that will address a number of issues uh, affecting women in Nigeria. It is the first in the country aimed at using data and technology to inform and eliminate all forms of violence. The Minister of Women Affairs has also inaugurated a technical working committee to this effect. Mom Sudanian at NTA News. Today, Tuesday, is the penultimate day of the 2020 Edo State National Sports Festival, which is holding in 2021 after delays due to COVID-19 challenge. Let's go over now to the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium in Benin City, where Tamara Ebiwe is standing by. Tamara, it's good to see you. What's the latest as far as the National Sports Festival is concerned? Edo State still trying to catch up, but Delta State look destined to win the 2020 Edo State National Sports Festival. Good to see you at your well. Edo State is cool and calm, and of course, uh, activities are gradually winding down. Today, this place I'm standing used to be busy with athletes going in and out of the stadium. But as you can see now, everywhere is calm. Because everybody is preparing for the closing ceremony scheduled for tomorrow. And of course, interesting events have been lined up to crown the 2020 National Sports Festival. We will be having the 4 by 400 and 4 by 100 also as um, the mixed relays as well. And of course, entertainers will be at the stadium to sing Nigerian music. The likes of Tenny and Joe Boy will be at the stadium during the closing ceremony. Teams also will also parade themselves as it used to be. Outside the closing
closing ceremony there was chaos today at the boxing ring uh, the boxing fight between team Ondo and team Lagos it was a gold medal fight but you know what sport is when tensions begin to rise everywhere was disrupted but as I speak with you the place is calm and events have continued Delta State is leading the medal stable they've not dropped at all and Edo State is still chasing but will Edo catch up with Delta State. We wait as events finally wrap up on Wednesday. Thank you. Samara, we expect to see a sign of for the closing ceremony on Wednesday. Now, let's join Olumide Egmontola for more on sports updates. Nigeria's only individual Olympic gold medalist, Chioma Ajua, says, as part of activities to celebrate our Silver Jubilee Olympic gold medal, won at Atlanta 1986, she will focus more on talent discovery programs to harness young talent in athletics, football, and taekwondo. She maintained that the young athletes with potentials will be calmed and groomed to become future stars. In volleyball, another chapter of a drive to popularize and develop the game of volleyball by the leadership of the Nigeria Volleyball Federation, Musa Nimrod, has been opened as the president presented and distributed 24 nets to 24 states and 111 latest balls to all the 36 states and Abuja. Presenting the equipment to the representatives of the Nigeria Directors of Sports, Musa Nimroy said the actions to further develop the game at the grassroots, advising the zonal representative on the ball to replicate it at the various constituencies. Here you have even the V200W latest Mikasa balls. But I want to advise a state relying on the federation, either the president will not help us. In football, action continues on Wednesday in the UEFA Champions League as Borussia Dortmund welcomes Manchester City with one two goals deficit. Same for Liverpool, that will trade tackles with Real Madrid with one three goals disadvantage. With sports updates, Olum D. Kuntola, NT News. And sports updates runs off nationwide today. I'm Ayo Deji Makinde. Please remember to connect with the NTA in the fight and stand against rape and rapists to be a star. On behalf of the entire production crew, good evening.